Thanks, Benny. Um, it's a little bit rattled. A bit rattled from the, earlier today. Earlier today, just out the front. This woman just came up to me and slapped me right in the face. Probably actually, not as hard as that, actually. And all I said was, 52. I mean, her T-shirt did say guess. <laughs> so... What, uh, Benny's done a great job at the School Hard Knock Knocks in, in getting us to practice. And he's saying, you've got to practice. You've got to practice as many times as possible. And he says, practice in front of a mirror so you can see what you look like. We didn't have any mirrors in our house. So the only mirror we've got is in the bathroom. So I've been doing it after a shower. So I feel a little bit weird wearing clothes, right? But it's probably better for you guys just here. I don't want to take an eye out. Right, so my name is Sean, um, and uh, I've heard all the jokes, Sean the Sheep and all of that, and, uh, it's, uh, but I really get pissed off because people can't, don't know how to spell it. It's S-E-A-N. Yes, it's Irish spelling, and yes, the Irish may have been drunk when they came up with the spelling, but that's how it's spelled. And I've seen the A-U and the A-W, but I've heard one at my local cafe recently where I was there, I ordered my coffee, the barista's there on the espresso machine making the coffee, and then... I'm, I'm reading the paper, just sort of catching up on the news. I'm deep in a, a tough in, investigative journalism piece in the, in the Herald Sun, so I, my, my senses are dulled. <laughs> and, then I, and then I hear you know, a bit of noise, a bit of noise, and then the barista's there, he goes, Sian, Sian, coffee for Sian. And I was so pissed off, but it was seven o'clock and I needed a coffee. So I took the coffee and then I thought, is someone ringing me right now? <laughs> Then I thought, well, hang on, uh, a weak soy latte with extra foam sounds like a coffee for Sian. So I accepted the coffee, picked up my McHappy Meal and left. <laughs> so who here, I mean, I know someone here's got a smartphone because I just heard it, right? Who here's got a new smo- a smartphone or getting a new smartphone? That's pretty much the transition we're in now. We're either got a new one or we're about to get one. And so this thing, it it rules my life. It helps me connect with my friends and my family, build my business. But I'm wondering if it's actually making us smarter. The new tech that's coming out, is it really making us smarter? Have you seen the new Google Pixel? It's got squeeze technology. You simply squeeze it to activate it. We can't fucking press a button these days. (laughs) And really, can can we adapt squeeze technology to other things and activate them? I'd love that on my girlfriend. Apple, Apple agrees with Google. They want it to be easier. They've brought out facial recognition. So you just look at your phone and it unlocks. You don't need to press any buttons. Now, it's strange. Apple can do it and everyone's fine. The government wants to bring in facial recognition and, and stop the terrorists and protect our airports and major events. And no, we don't want Big Brother watching. But we're okay with Apple having it as long as we can get in iTunes really quickly. <laughs> But what I want to see, I want to see the facial recognition technology adapted for a, for a segment of the market that really needs it. Like, I love working with athletes. They do terrific things on the field, but sometimes they do stupid things off the field. And you know where stupid things end up? On the internet. So if, if the phone can detect our face and unlock, what I want is it to detect a cock and lock. <laughs> lock unlock, lock. Unlock, lock, lock, unlock. Hang on, that's the Ricky Nixon setting. Two, two. And the good thing about the cock locking technology, your dickhead mates will never call you. But one technology that just never works is autocorrect. Is it ever correct? Right? I've got a, I've got a, a group chat with a couple of mates and we're always having banter backwards and forwards. And my mate Steve, one night, he, he called me a lazy cubit. I'm like, what? But I did not want, it was 11 o'clock, I didn't want to get into a deep and meaningful on the messenger to find out what it is, so I just put the phone on the bed and woke up the next morning and then I see, fucking autocorrect, you're a lazy anyway. <laughs> what I do like about tech is, is the, 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 it'll help us with passwords because everyone has their, their own password strategy and they're all shit, right? They're all shit. There'll be people, there, there's the one cat person, there's a cat person over there, they'll have their password as a cat. There'll be, there'll be sports fans that want to use a password to show their fandom. I'm sure there's someone in the audience that's changed their Netflix password to Tigers 2017. Am I right, Josh? Yeah. Right, but it's got to be more inventive for the hackers. 
Like, like, make it obscure, show your fandom, change it to Dusty Chopsticks for the win. <laughs> right? The other type of baby, the other type of password strategy is, is the new parents. Right? You've just had the baby, you've shared all the pictures, and you want to profess your love. You know what professing your love is? Making it your password for your Wi-Fi. The baby's name and the date. Oh, isn't that awesome? You know what's in a dilemma? When you have the second child, you have to go and change the passwords. It's such a hassle. Little you, do you know that that's why the uh, Chinese one-child policy, it's not about population growth, <laughs> right? It's lazy password management. So thank you very much. You've all been a terrific bunch of cubits. Yeah.